Hello YouTube. It is Kitty Wolf 13. Um, it's been a while since I've made a video, but I just wanted to do a quick little chit chat video. Um, I've gotten some dolls recently through layaways and things like that, and I don't think I've shared them with anyone. I really need to get back into doing the review videos. Um, so hopefully I can start doing that again soon. I just need to make an area again to be able to properly set up the camera and all of that fun stuff. Um, sorry about the light. It is winter time, so it gets dark faster, and there is no light, and the lighting in this room is crappy. And I'm using one of my camera setup light, one of my camera lights, which is really bright, and I couldn't figure out a way of offsetting it, so this will have to do for now. I wanted you to be able to see what I'm talking about versus me, but it's making the light kind of funny. So anyways, the first doll I wanted to talk about was um, a doll that I ri purchased from a friend of mine here in town locally. She is a doll chateau hybrid. Um, I believe She's all, all doll chateau, but she's a hybrid between two different dolls. This is the um, K11 body, which is the one with the really lanky joints, like in the neck and in the arm. And she's got jointed fingers, which is my favorite part of this. Um, I used to have a jointed pair of hands, and I didn't like them because they were too fiddly, and they would do what I call the, the dead tarantula thing. They were always turned in weird, funky angles. But these, since they only have one joint, are pretty cool in my opinion. And much more elegant and pretty... and easier to keep from looking like a dead tarantula. Um, I do want to... or getting back to her, I believe this is the Matthew head, which is a boy sculpt. And as you can see, she's really quite tiny. She's wearing a Barbie top. And I think these are custom-made MSD pants for her. But she's got an alpaca wig that somebody made from a doll, that, another doll that I had purchased in the past. Um, Really, I think she's a really fascinating doll. My friend also did these really cool henna tattoos. I like the proportions and the lankiness of her and the downright oddness. I might remove the head, the extra neck joint, I'm not entirely sure, because I do like the alien proportions and they these might look strange without the extra neck joint. I originally wanted a Stacy, which is the SD version, but she's kind of out of my price range right now, so I settled for the MSD version. and. I would like to use her as a photography model, but I think her weird proportions and jointed fingers would be very interesting for a photography model. So, um, her name is Eve, and she doesn't have much backstory yet, so this is just Eve, the weird, lanky model. The next doll I wanted to share is this boy. I purchased him from BJD Love, and basically when I first started the doll hobby, I wanted one female and one male doll from whatever company tickled my fancy, whatever I was interested in at the time. Um, LB, this is an uh, Noah LB, was always one of my, was my f more favorite of the two dolls. But as most of you may or may not know, when Anoa first came out, they were really, really expensive because Alchemic Lab only ever made dolls like once a year or once every two or three years. And it was like a limited lottery, a limited lottery, and they were really hard to get. So an Anoa back in the day was like $800 to $1,000. Um, I have an Anoa sist. Her name is Ikaya. Ikaya. And I purchased her back in the day through Nopin or Crescent, what they were known back then. 
in a pre-order so that I could get her for about the more average price, which is 400 and some, around that, $400, around there. Um, I have no idea what his leg is doing, he keeps twisting around. But anyways, BJD Love had this guy for sale for quite a while, and I was surprised that he was still available. He has a really gorgeous face up by a previous owner. I was surprised that I had eyes in this size because he came with nothing. But um, they're a little dark, so I don't know if he'll keep them. But yes, yeah, so I now have an Anoa LB boy. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I will be doing with him or who he is, but he's quite adorable and I couldn't pass him up for the price that she had him listed for. And he's just too darn cute to pass up. So I now have an Anoa boy to go with my Anoa cyst. Um, I guess the next things I wanted to talk about is what everybody else in the YouTube dolly cycle world is talking about. Whatever's hiding in here. Um, I'm always saying that I can't sew. Apparently I could sew utilitarian things. I did make this little pouch bag thing. But I can't seem to sew clothes for anything in the world. It's quite strange. But anyways... I decided to pick up two of these girls at home when I was there the other day just because everybody else is talking about their Blythe. Funny story about Blythe. I managed to pick up Lark first. She's a custom Blythe. Actually both of the ones that I brought today are custom but they're my two favorite girls. The funny thing about Blythe is when I first bought my first Blythe I bought her strictly on the thing, on the topic of, I wanted to know what the deal with these dolls were. They kind of creeped me out, they had no eyebrows, and everybody loves them. And I was like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Why do people like these dolls that are big headed and have no eyes, or rather no eyebrows? Everybody seems to like them. So I ordered Odette, which was a Cassiopeia Spice, or Cassiopeia Spice, and I didn't do anything with her. I opened her, I unboxed her, I played around with her for a little bit, and then she went in a drawer for many years. Then I ran into my a friend of mine locally, and she was big into Blythe, so that kind of gave me the Blythe bug. So then my collection boomed to, I think, about... 12 or so dolls. About 90% of them right now are custom. I think I only have one stock Blythe right now, which is um, Wendy Weekender. I kind of want another Cassiopeia Spice because I sent my original Cassiopeia Spice to Annie Dolls to customize her. So this is Odette, which is my first Blythe doll. And going back to when I originally had first received Blythe, everybody said they were very creepy. So I always wanted to drive around town with just a doll looking out the window like this to scare people in the car because I thought it was funny. But I find Blythe really charming. They're re this one in particular reminds me of my mom. She gives she definitely gives me the 60s vibe, especially her default outfit. She comes with a little camera, which is really cute. And um so I don't know. Odette is my favorite and my first Blythe. And she has custom eye chips and she's an Annie Dolls custom. Now, like I said, this is just a rambly video of new coming dolls. Um a doll brand that I haven't really talked to you guys much about are the A-Zones. I have several A-Zones, and I like them. They're really cute. I like the engineering. I like the body style. I don't like how floppy they tend to be and how sometimes their parts, depending on which version, fall off. But I do have a couple. About five or six, maybe a few more. And... For the most part, I don't do much with them, but every once in a while, I hybrid other dolls onto them. For example, this is a vintage um, doll from some anime that I didn't even know 
I picked up the doll in an anime shop in Tampa, and I put her on the Pure Nemo body because I didn't like the body she came with because it was a standard kind of Barbie-esque body. And I put her on this body and it was really cute. Um, the interesting part about her, and I'm saying um a lot in this video, I'm so sorry. Usually I'm a little better about that. The interesting thing about the A-Zones is they're cute and I like them, but I never really had an attach to, attachment to them. Recently, however, I got this girl. This is Rin from Love Live. I pre-ordered her just because I really like the cutie kitty mouth thing she's got going on. She's in one of the idol uniforms and she's really cool. For some reason, I really, really like her. And I couldn't put my finger on why until she came home and I put her next to the my other A-Zones. She is significantly taller. And there's something about her size, maybe her proportions too, because it's not so childish. It's hard to see in this little dress she's got on that's getting washed out by my light. But there's just something I really like about her. The only thing I would change is I really hate that she's got this weird side pigtail thing that's in a completely different color, which is part of the outfit and not her hair, typically. Um, the Love Life girls came with uh, several sets of hands, which is weird because when you buy a Pure Nemo standard release or just the body, they don't come with extra hands. But this girl did, which is kind of cool. But I really like her, and I don't understand why. And it has to, I'm assuming it has to be that this is a size I've never had before. They're all pretty much this size and up. Or this size and down. I have a Pico Nemo, too, and she's really cute. But I'm always terrified of her losing hands or feet. So I hardly ever take her anywhere. But I could see her being a travel doll. Because I really like her. I, I, I don't know if these feel more fiddly than this one. But I like her, and I can't figure out why. So, I think that's pretty much all the dolly things that I wanted to talk about. I mean, I'm still working on saving up, or I'm saving up money for some MSD Obitsu. I don't know if I've talked about it on my YouTube or not. And I'm really hoping to sometime soon order those girls and bring them home so I can start working on them and creating the characters for them. I'm not in like I want to share the story, but at the same time I don't want to share the story, and that'll be another video that I'm going to shoot after this one. But um, I do want to share some more doll stories, and I recently came across an old story that I started writing for my for Ringo's story, which um, it's called Haven Way, and I might share that one if you guys are so inclined to listen to it. I reread what I had written so far and it was actually pretty interesting and I thought it was really good. So that being said, I'm going to sign off because this video is already really, really long. Rin here says goodbye and I'm going to do another video about artwork. So if you're interested in that and my story blabbing, check out that one. All right, see you later. Bye.